I thought that the Gravastar Charger was already a step in a bold direction, transforming the usual object into something, well, actually that you could keep on your desk, unlike any other chargers. But today we're here to talk about a mouse. A mouse from Gravastar, and that's got me slightly surprised because, well, I had speakers from Gravastar, had earbuds from Gravastar. I didn't expect them to jump on the peripherals and create a gaming mouse for a portable price. And if you follow me for some time and you've seen my Gravastar products reviews, you know that the Gravastar is a company that likes to favor design, but not all the actual utility. Each design, including Gravastar Mercury M2 mouse, which I hold in my hands, it's something special and something unique. And there is absolutely no doubt that they've made a mouse that looks like no other. But the question is, is it any good? I have my years, and my gaming days are probably over, but on occasion I do enjoy to play a game or two. And first I was using um, Rocket Tion, a very good mouse from a standpoint of having all the buttons that you could have, but it lacked a wireless freedom. And to enable that I switched over to the Razer Basilisk B3, completely wireless gaming mouse. So you can tell that uh, throughout my life I was using high-end gaming peripherals to do my gaming and content creation. And while moving from Tion to Basilisk felt like a step down because I was sacrificing a lot of different buttons, moving from Basilisk to Mercury M2 feels like a sidestep to me because at the surface level they offer very similar features. Before I gonna dive in any deeper, I would like you to know that M2 isn't the only mouse available from Gravastar. They also have M1 Pro and M1 options, which are slightly more expensive. They offer premium materials like titanium design and 4000 Hz pulling, which is probably important for gamers, but not for people like me. But in this review, I'm only gonna cover Mercury M2, which I have in my hands, and it's priced at $79.99, which for the feature set it offers, it's actually quite reasonable. After having a blast unboxing speakers or earbuds, uh, Gravastar came up with a, a little bit more non-nonsense approach to boxing this thing up. Inside you are quickly found a mouse, a dongle, an adapter and a nicely braided cable. They also included spare Teflon pads in terms of worn yours and a couple of stickers they can apply to the mouse uh, that will increase the grip ability on the mouse which is a nice thing to have. And this is where it comes silly because I'm going to praise the Gravastar about the inclusion of USB Type-C port. And I know this doesn't sound like much, but after using Basilisk V3, which costed a fortune and required not only micro USB cable, but specific micro USB cable or extra dongle for 50 quid to charge that bloody thing or use exacto knife to trim the usual cables I could actually jump and fit this thing, it's nice to see a, just a simple USB Type-C cable unobstructed that you can just plug it in and either use your mouse when plugged with the cable included or any other cable or just leave it for charging, which is super nice. So big thanks for that stuff because I like that a lot. At this point, you probably want to talk about the design of this mouse because it looks like no other. This hollowed out design might not please everyone, especially those suffering from what was that fury again? I wrote it down. It's tripophobia, the fear of holes. So apart from these people, you actually might like the design itself. Technically, it's a weight-saving design which puts this mouse at 79 grams, which actually does feel like one of the lightest mouse I've held in my hands. Now, to me, it isn't as much of a benefit because pref my preference is to use a little bit heavier mouse, but to gamers out there, it's probably gonna be more important. But where things matter most is the weight distribution, because unlike other mice that I used in the past, this mouse, it's top heavy. This means if you're using, instead of palm grip, you're using a claw or finger grip, you'll notice that the bulk of the weight is located at the top of the mouse where the buttons are. And this is something that you'll have to get used to. In terms of specification and connectivity, it sports impressive 26,000 DPI, which frankly speaking, I don't know what kind of screen you have to actually have to support this, 
but I was fine in the ranges up to 1600 and I don't really care about anything other than that. But if you have like massive 4K or 8K display and you really don't want to move your uh, mouse that much, the support is there. From the connectivity standpoint, we have a wireless connection supporting up to 1000 polling rate, 1000 hertz polling rate, and Bluetooth. That's right, you have a Bluetooth support and wireless dongle support, which comes included. The USB type A dongle can be plugged into a computer or stored at the bottom of the mouse when you're using it in a Bluetooth mode. Apart from the 1000 Hz pulling rate, there are advantages of actually using the dongle. Now, first of all, you can use the Govastar configuration tool to configure the RGB, um, kind of like a Firefly <laughs> butt of this mouse to your uh, preference, or configure one of the six buttons to your preference. As per sensor itself, I found it to be quite pleasant. I had no problem tracking it. I even tested it on glass and it was relatively good, so kudos for that, Gravastar. I doubt you're gonna have any problems. It's actually hard to find a mouse that supports Bluetooth and wireless dongle at the same time at this price range, so Gravastar is pulling their weight in here. It's not just designed, but interesting features packed inside the M2. But before you get excited, there are a couple of things missing. First of all, the device can be only paired with a single Bluetooth device, so if you want to hop between computers or devices, there are no options to pair multiple devices to this mouse. And while we're talking about the Bluetooth, you cannot configure this mouse using a Bluetooth to your computer. You have to have it connected via dongle in order to use the utility to configure the button, to configure the uh, light. In a Bluetooth mode, you'll have just a standard subset of the mouse and it will act as just a default ID device. Switching over to dongle, there are some limitations too, because while you can configure and export different profiles for your different games, etc., build macros, assign different uh, button functions, or even control the debones on the buttons, which is quite interesting, one of the things that you cannot do is to store the different profiles on the mouse itself. You'll have to export the files, take it with you, and then set it up on a new computer. For me personally, it's not a big deal. I only use this mouse with a single computer, but if I wanted to go and connect it to another computer and take advantage of my settings to play there, maybe that would bother you a little bit more. At this point, you probably know everything there is about this mouse, except for the comfort. So let's talk about this. This mouse is full of holes. It's like a Swiss cheese of mice. And you might be thinking whether it's comfortable. Actually, it is. It's very comfortable. and I had absolutely no problem using it. Now, whether the holes will help you with your sweaty palms or not, I can't answer that because my palms don't sweat, but I can tell there is actually a pleasant feeling of holding this in my hand. One of the things I kind of had to get used to is the size of the mouse. Despite being a very similar in size to my Basilisk B3, in my hand it feels much smaller, which at first bothered me, but as I was using the mouse, I was finding my new comforts and getting used to, to where the buttons are and how they respond. In a similar fashion, I had to get used to the fact that the buttons were activating rather gently. That might be your preference, but it took me a moment to overcome how easily it was to press on the buttons, and I found that in a palm grip, I couldn't really rest my fingers on the buttons because that would cause an accidental activation. But don't get me wrong, this isn't a disadvantage. Within two or three days, I was able to diminish all those random clicks and get used to the fact that I have a new mouse and develop new habits. So right now, my accidental clicks are really kept at minimum. At the beginning of this review, I told you I'm not much of a gamer. I'm more or less a content creator, which likes to game from time to time. And frankly speaking, a lot of that gaming happens on a PlayStation with a controller. But on occasion, when I switched over to a mouse, my requirements really aren't that high. I know that for someone that cares a lot about their game, switching over to 1000 Hertz polling rate on the mouse will be important and they will be able to feel the difference between that and Bluetooth. But honestly, I was playing a round of Counter-Strike on Bluetooth mode and 1000 Hertz polling rate and I barely noticed any difference. In fact, my aim was mostly affected by the fact that I wasn't used to the mouse and I'm a terrible gamer. But if you like your games and you would like to dial in your mouse to your preference, the Gravastar software provides you with all the major options to do it so, including Macro Creator, an ability to pretty much rewire entire mouse 
to your preferred configuration. That and the most requested feature on gaming mouse, which is RGB, uh, can be also controlled via software too. And in regards to the battery, the Gravastar promises anywhere between 60 to uh, 100 hours, depending on the mode you use and uh, RGB highlights. An interesting thing about the RGB highlights is that it uses the sensor inside and only enables when your palm is outside of the mouse, meaning it doesn't really waste your a battery when you operate the mouse because let's face it when you use the mouse you you wouldn't even see it so that's a nice addition to the uh, battery saving feature i guess but if you run out of power you can still just hook up the braided cable which is nice soft and drag free and continue gaming and i don't think that would impact your kill death ratio in any significant way either so whatever your requirements and whatever your settings are you always are covered to use this mouse Switching over to content creation, I can appreciate a couple of things with, first of all, being the ability to switch to the Bluetooth mode. Because, frankly speaking, I don't need that high responsive uh, polling rate, but what I could use is extra USB Type-A port not being obstructed by a dongle. Plus, having six different buttons that you can use on your mouse gives you just enough control to pretty much engage in any creative tasks, from editing videos to working in Photoshop, whatever you do, you'll find yourself just having enough buttons to supplement your keyboard shortcuts. And yes, I will admit, if someone would made a mouse that looks as cool as this, it's wireless and it has all the buttons that Rocket's tie on would, I'd pay heavy money for it. But considering that this mouse in particular is $79.99, I consider that to be a pretty decent deal for someone that looks uh, for a mouse that is, is good for gaming, but it also allows you to enjoy all the connectivity on your uh, laptop and uh, just have something that looks really pretty on your desk. <laughs> so in my opinion, Gravastar once again proved that you can play with the design, have fun with it without sacrificing the utility of the device that you're trying to design. And I think with Mercury M2, they've achieved just that without asking you for too much of your money. So if you're interested guys, in the description of this video you're going to find the links to this device and to M1. Yeah, <laughs> that just went to sleep. Where was I? Ah, yes, you'll also find the M1 Pro if you're interested in the titanium version of this mouse and all the information that you might find useful. As for now guys, you know how it works. I do not have a posting schedule. You know how YouTube works, so go figure that out in order to get notifications, etc. But there's a couple of social media links. Follow me there to enable the conversation and well, tell me what you think about this mouse or any other products that you would like me to check out. Thanks so much for watching and see you then. Bye!